Last time you saw the family burnout wagon, it blew a brake line with a drag strip. It rolled right through the foot brake, as you can see right here, it never stopped. So we're going to fix that today with some stainless steel brake lines, but I can't leave well enough alone, so we're also going to take the opportunity to put in a line lock. We're also going to take this time to replace our tired stock torque converter from the 700R4 with this FTI triple clutch disc lockup converter with a 3800 stall. Should be a little more fun at the drag strip. Welcome to the Burnouts and Rotor Blades YouTube channel. Let's go do something awesome. After the video, head to the Burnouts and Rotor Blades Facebook page and order one of these Family Burnout Wagon t-shirts to help support the channel. Thanks. Alright, so some things we're going to need to do this job are obviously the replacement brake lines. Now I ordered two different kits from Summit and if I'm honest, I did this so long ago that I can't remember why I ordered two kits. I ordered new banjo bolts just in case. Well, those are 100% wrong. The copper washer set that I ordered randomly off of Amazon, not something you want to reuse again. I've gotten myself into trouble a couple of times trying to reuse those, and it only causes leaks, so every time I ever pull them off from now on, they'll always go in the trash. And then there's the, the line lock kit. So let's get started. We'll replace the brake line first. Now the brakes on the front and back of the family burnout wagon are not the stock G-body brakes. They're 2000 S10 Blazer brakes. And if you'd like to see a, a video of me installing these initially, doing the conversion, you can click in the link up there. If you look on here, you'll notice that this set is pretty, uh, is, is pretty tight. Um, so these longer ones that I ordered here from, from Summit ought to uh, make up the difference and allow me a little bit better of a routing option. Anything's a hammer if you're brave enough. Now that we're done with this one, we'll do the other side the same way and we'll move on to the back. After finally getting back here to work on the back, I remember what these uh, brake lines were for. The Russell kit had three brake lines. For the stock G body, it would be two fronts and one rear center line. The longer brake lines was a set that we installed on the front, which made up for the differences in brake caliper from the 2000 S10 Blazer calipers that we installed, installed on the front in a previous video. This the reason those lines broke was because they were being pulled on really, really hard uh, whenever I was at full full turning or um, a full extension, and that's what caused those brake lines to fail. The other front brake line was just as bad, and it was pretty terrifying whenever I went to pull it off to think that I might have taken my family down the highway with that brake line being that bad. Now whenever you go from a disc brake setup to a drum brake setup, it's important to realize that you can no longer just use a hard line because the brake caliper actually moves around a little bit. So that's why we're going to use what would have gone on the front of the family burnout wagon from the Russell brake line kit that only comes with three brake lines here on the rear on our Fox body 8.8 .8 rear axle with the 2000 S10 Blazer rear brakes. Summit sends this complete kit with part number 760006 and 
it looks pretty cool. It comes with stuff like this, which doesn't work. Better off going to bend yourself up some tubing from the local hardware store as best you can around a bench vise. Get yourself a couple of these Edelman uh, adapters that go from 1 8 NPT, which fits into uh, the actual solenoid, and 5 16 which is what these are right here, that go into the actual uh, master cylinder. The tubing that I used was 5 16 tubing, uh, 12 inches long. I don't have a bender for this tubing, so that's why it looks like a four-year-old did it. But you know what? Let's uh, bleed the brakes now and see where my leaks are. Then even more fun than that, we get to fix a problem that the family burnout wagons had for a while, and that is a torque converter that just cannot stand up to the medium horsepower that the engine's putting out right now. So we got this FTI 9.5 inch triple disc lockup converter with a 3800 stall from FTI, and uh, we're gonna throw that, throw that in. Hopefully I ordered the right um, spline count because this one's a 30 and I don't really know what the one in the car is so either this will be a real short video with me not going to the drag strip or it's going to be an awesome video ending up the drag strip god that's heavy 38 pounds it says there is a uh, drag racing starting a test and tune in about two hours so uh, i gotta hustle this is our old stock torque converter and this is the new nine and a half inch torque converter notice the difference in size there's two main differences when ordering a torque converter for your 700R4 or your 4L60. It's going to be this forward portion of the input shaft. This is the pump shaft back here. It's always going to have 27 splines. Uh, but this one right here is your actual input shaft, and it's either going to have 27 or 30 splines. This one's a 30 spline. I counted it to make sure, and I know that I ordered a 30 spline torque converter. So I'm going to fill it up with transmission fluid, and then we'll check it on. That's not right. That's not light at all. Okay. A few old head bolts make really, really nice stands whenever you put them in the front of the transmission and then use them to hold them up on the jack stand. One quick public service announcement though, when you're doing stuff like this, clean out your drain pan because you need to know what kind of stuff has come out of the transmission so you know if your transmission's healthy or not. You're not gonna know that if you have a bunch of crap in your drain pan already. So here we are again at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway and we got the family burnout wagon out and uh, now it's time to do some more drag racing. See how that, see how that line lock and how the, uh, the new torque converter is working. So um, things that you guys didn't get to see I did off camera. I went ahead and threw a boost reference fuel pressure regulator on it and reset my floats and bumped up the pressure a little bit. So hopefully it'll stop doing that thing it was doing on the highway at wide open throttle and in boost it was, uh, it was leaning out and just dying. So I was running out of fuel. So. Uh, fix for that is obviously a boost, boost reference um, pressure regulator, uh, fuel pressure regulator, something I should have done a long time ago, but um, just didn't know any better. So uh, that's done now, and uh, it's time to see what uh, this thing does in the, the quarter mile now. All right, so I'm going up against this Grand National, so it's going to be a little bit of Jeep body.
like the perfect hit. Daddy won. That was so perfect. Daddy won. He actually won. All right. Thirteen two fifty. What? Thirteen two. Oh my god. Oh my god. I got. What the. A 13.253 at 104. Oh my god, that is a huge improvement. Although I'm probably gonna get bumped from the track because that was too fast and I don't have a helmet. That was awesome! <laughs> If you like the content and want to see more like it, and as always, thanks for watching. Family for the wagon! Family! Oh, yes.